Hi, I'm Joyce Krieger, and this is ArtLink, conversations with artists, art professionals, art consultants, art lovers, and art collectors. My guest today is a woman that actually sent me information a while ago, and I was so excited by the work that I actually picked up the telephone and called her, which is quite unusual for me. Her name is Nancy Hayes. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Joyce. Good to see you. It's good to be here. Uh, Nancy, your work is very unusual. It's very distinctively yours. Can you give us a little bit of your background about, I know you were a sculptor at one point working with ceramics, and just a little bit of the history behind your work and how you got to what you're doing today. Um, well, as we were speaking prior to starting the interview, we talked about the fact that I was a sculptor and that um, my father is an architect and my mother is a floral designer. And that is actually very crucial to my aesthetic. And I think it's kind of the tunnel from which I come to, s to see the world, um, very linear and organic at the same time. And I went to art school. I didn't major in anything. I was, went to Tyler School of Art, and that particular time you could graduate interdepartmental, which was really awesome because at 18 and 19 you don't really know what you want to do anyway, and it gave me the opportunity to um, experiment in a lot of different mediums. So I did a lot of printmaking, I did some painting, you know, was always drawing, and um, did some sculpture. I was working in wood at the time. So that was kind of a basic foundation. After I finished school, I, um, I settled in Philadelphia. Backtrack for a second. So mm -hmm. at Tyler, you basically did very overview of everything? Overview of everything. And then they didn't ask you to participate in any one particular medium at that point? No, no, no. I think it was the last year when I was there that you could actually graduate as inner. Um, departmental and then after that you had to choose a major okay um, I had the most credits in sculpture so they gave me a studio in the sculpture department but it was it was a place where I was able to kind of try to find out who I was as an artist what my aesthetic was and I very quickly realized that I was abstract in essence. I looked at the world through its lines and its patterns um, and its essence, shall we say. At the time, I didn't have the maturity, the tools, or the experience to express it. Um, but I was, I was going there. I was going down that road. And I had a few teachers who recognized that and let me explore that part of myself. Was this a school that really allowed for that type of exploration? Yes. Exploration. Yes, at the time Tyler was. Because a lot of schools were very classically, very right. classically trained, and mm. you had to really f go down a specific path. Right. I think there were probably teachers that you could have studied with if that were your interest, but I was discovering that that was not my interest. Now, I will say there is a little bit of a downside to this because I don't think that I actually achieved any expertise in anything. I didn't walk away from undergraduate school really all that capable. I wasn't a good painter. I wasn't really that good of a sculptor. I wasn't really that great of a printmaker. Excuse me, is that coming from you or is that coming from those around I mean, it's you? Coming from, it's coming from a retrospective view of what I was doing at the time. I, I mean, I'm just, I, I am, I'm not just being humble. I am, think I'm really being honest because it wasn't until after that that I started to explore clay. And my mother had worked in clay when I was young, and that was a place that I was just not going to go. And Tyler actually had a very good ceramic department. And I knew, I knew I had no interest in ceramics per se. I wasn't a pot maker. I wasn't really a crafts person. But I liked when I, got, I started working in clay after um, finishing undergraduate school at a community arts center. This was in West Philadelphia. And I just really liked how it felt in my hands 
and I just so I just started making pots because I didn't know what else to do. That's you know everybody kind of made pots. That's what you did. But mine kind of got sculptural, and I started building with coils. And before you knew what I was building these forms, and then I started to realize this is a a very sculptural medium. I, I don't need to make pots. I don't need to make utilitarian ware. I can make sculpture from this. And so my year working in this com arts um, community center um, kind of gave me the courage to go on with this medium. Now there's a, I was living in Philadelphia and there's Philadelphia School of the Art. My brother had gone there. My mother had actually gone there. She went back to school in her 50s and graduated in the clay department. And I said, well, you know what? Maybe I can go there for a year. I knew I wasn't ready for graduate school. And they had what was called this, um, it was like a special student, special for many ways. <laughs> and um, so you could go for a year and you could develop a body of work to try to get into graduate school. So I was accepted and did that and that was really really great because I could just go every day I wasn't burdened with a lot of the other classes that a regular student would be burdened with I think I took a art um, a ceramic history class and worked in the studio the whole time and I, and I were I waited tables so what did you get out of the clay personally that you can relate to oh. now that you're a painter I think at the time it really um, it answered the questions I had about form and design and, and line in a three-dimensional way. At the time, I was extruding just these kind of um, rectangular logs. I don't know how to explain it. And I would take them, these extruded pieces, and um, build with them as like steel, like almost like melting steel because they and I would just build these forms and it, so it was satisfying this need to be three-dimensional but also linear and then as the forms developed they started to become more organic and that's when I started kind of moving into the process with my own voice like okay now I've, I'm kind of starting to work out these technical issues and what clay can do for me as a sculptor and satisfying uh, you know, one aspect of myself, but then this whole organic thing started to happen. But it took time. And as a consequence of that year, I did get into graduate school and I went to um, what was called at the time Swain School of Design. That but you had shared with me that you were frustrated with the glazes, that you couldn't get the colors that you wanted. Right. And at some point, you started thinking about painting. Yeah, that came color in, became really right, important. Right, that came in time. I mean, I went from graduate school, working in clay, developing, um, and then setting up my own studio and working in clay for 25 years prior it to all of that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I... I really developed myself as an artist as a clay sculptor and um, all of the accolades or whatever that I have been awarded have been as a clay sculptor and it wasn't until about five years ago when I turning 50 when I realized I am so much more interested in what I'm doing on the surface of the pieces than I am in making the pieces and so I just started to paint at home at night because I'm very disciplined. And I do have two children. And by this time, five years ago, I'm on to my second child is, well, he's now 10. So he would have been five. And so he's starting to go to school and I'm working, you know, from nine to three. And then he'd get home from school and I put in a couple more hours. And that was my clay time. So at night, I started painting because I thought, well, you know, I'm not going to take time for my studio time. And I started loving what I could do with the paint. And eventually, paint became full time and I let go of the clay. And a part of it was my age because I'm looking at my life and I'm looking at what I want to do. And there was a part of me that always wanted to be a painter. And I said, you know, it's now or never because I also have a, a deep respect for painters. I've shared studios with painters and 
I realized it's going to take a long time for me to find my voice as a painter before I can start showing my work, before I can call myself a painter. Um, so but had, you were a painter as a sculptor. I, I was, but I didn't allow that title. I, I, um, I struggled with that. I, you know, you asked if Tyler, um, was it a classical school? Was it a school where, you know, in the, in the tradition of oil painting, let's say, like the Academy in Philadelphia is a school about right. the tradition of painting. Um, I don't paint like that. So I considered painters to be like those people, <laughs> people who, you know, painted either from the figure or from a landscape or from a still life, um, who worked in oil. So I really struggled with my identity as to who I was as an artist. I could call myself a ceramic sculptor because I was working in clay and I was doing sculpture. So th that and you had fit. 25 years. Yeah, and I was at 25 <laughs> years and you know people knew me as such and that, that made sense. And now to start calling myself a painter felt very awkward and um, I almost felt like I was insulting to those who have been painting for so long. Can I read this quote? Because yes. I love this yeah. quote. This is from what you had said in something on, your inter on the internet. And it says, it seems like every day an insight as to the origins of my paintings is revealed. But instead of dwelling on any specific meaning, I enjoy pondering on the many possibilities and the universal connections. Can you talk a little bit about what these universal connections are and how they relate to the paintings that you're working on now and maybe even illustrate one or two of the paintings that you're talking mm -hmm. about so we can understand more. It's a timely question in, in this course of conversation because where I am now and where the paintings have brought me um, and why it's different than the clay sculpture. The sculpture, th there is a huge emotional aspect to working in clay and it because it's tactile because or? it's tactile and it's almost like things just grow out of it with it's you, it, you're so connected emotionally the painting allows for all of that but it also allows for this distance in space and objectivity so the paintings are coming from two sources one is this very soulful, emotional place, um, and the other is from that, again, that linear, architectural, mathematical pattern place. And Which the, are too diametrically they're opposed. They're too diametric, but the paintings allow me to, to bring these two aspects of myself and marry them together you know what, it's actually, I'm knitting them together. That's something I think about in my paintings because when I paint, I, I will start a painting um, and in one day I'll have the, the space of, for whatever I'm painting. Right now I'm working on these triptychs and they are f two feet by four feet each panel, so it's essentially six feet by four feet. But you started off three feet by four feet, and before that it was four by four. Right. How do you they keep get, getting? <laughs> they get bigger and bigger. It's while well, I'm getting more confident. And so as I work, so I'll have basically six by four, and one day I'll have the whole space covered with color. All three panels? All three just? panels. Now, oh. wa I've watered down acrylic, you know, really watered down. So you really work all three panels at the oh, same all time because the they're time. all connected. Yes, we'll yes. You'll see that. Yeah, yeah. No, very much at the same time. So what I'm doing first is I'm just finding a composition. So I'm finding these large elements, and it's about their relationship to one another. So maybe there'll be three large elements in this painting, and they'll all kind of have some color down because I need color to, to see color to jump off of it's a jump it's just a place to jump off to the next step and then the paintings get more and more articulated as I go and I was you know thinking recently so I have a lot so a lot of things start happening at the same time and there always gets to a point in a painting that gets very confusing because it's almost like things are fighting against each other. So, you know, who's going to take the dominant ground? Who's going to end up in the background? Does that happen from color or from the it, design itself? It happens itself? from color and scale are, are okay. two huge 
informers for that. And, um, but I was thinking, basically what I'm doing though is I'm actually knitting all these pieces together so that they eventually... Um, coexist. Coexist, right. And, and that's the ultimate thing. And I think that's what, in my sculpture as well, was bringing disparate forms, colors, uh, patterns, and bringing them into the same space so they speak with one voice. That's... Um, How do you make it speak with your voice? It just happens because I'm the one making them, so there's no other voice for but it to come from. But you shared some things with me yeah. about family and how the dynamics of the paintings can reference a lot of these social issues. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think I, I do. I, when I'm painting, I'm thinking about these forms and I'm thinking about the relationships with one another. And I'm thinking, you know, if you have two forms that are coming next to each other, you know, how do they affect each other? What's their conversation? Because I am an abstract artist. I mean, I can't, because I'm not figurative, right? But I'm not abstract in the sense where I think a lot of people, when they define abstract, they think of Pollock or they think of, um, you know, people just expressionly throwing down the paint and then something else and really letting go. I don't work that way. I actually work in a... Yours is much more controlled. Much, very controlled. It's extremely controlled. And um, I always say the work really gets done when I'm having lunch. How about? <laughs> because I'm looking at it and as I'm looking at the work, I know I'm eating so I can't be painting at the same time and I'm looking and I'm going, I'm trying all these different things on. Oh, what if I, what if that were a little darker in its color? Well, what if I do this? So in my mind, it's almost like I'm running a movie. But none of this happens before you start. No, no. That's what, it evolves it's, as. It evolves, yeah, through the What process. other painters paint like that? Oh, I think a lot of people let the process evolve. I, I, um, I, I mean, I always think, think about painters as taking a pencil, sketching out their design, yeah, thinking yeah. about what it is. But yours happens in a much more organic way, it I does. guess. It does. It um, does. Again, I think it's knitting together that um, the essence of the work and all the, the subtext, because there's so many things that do inform the work, and a lot of it I don't even understand. Knitting that together with a very controlled, purposeful design. If you had to say, one painting that you've done mm -hmm. is the one that speaks to you the most or the most successful, mm. what would you pick? Oh boy, it's always the one I'm working on. <laughs> really? Always. So Be what are you working on now? Um, the painting I'm working on now, it starts with a almost a, uh, a design that would be like your DNA, the structure that weaves through the whole painting. And then it has a formation that's like two big leaves in the back. And then it's held together with this design of just circles that come and go in the painting. And so sometimes you kind of notice them and sometimes that you don't. So that I, I feel is like the ultimate structure for which everything is kind of moving in and out of. You almost think of it like a trellis. So you have the trellis and you have these vines Things growing, growing, in, growing yeah. on it and sometimes they grow in and sometimes they grow out. Um, you have a show coming up, don't you? Yes, I do. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's an exciting opportunity yeah, it, this for is, you. This is an exciting opportunity. I've shown my work many, many times. Um, this is big for me because this is the first solo show that I've had outside of the, the New Bedford area in which I live, um, where I feel like I'm presenting myself and my paintings in my full capacity as an artist. Now, to explain that. I explain that by saying, I think through our lives we make art and it's coming from that place from which we're standing at that time. And sometimes our feet a little, are a little bit more wobbly than at other times. Of course. And I'm, our lives are a little bit wobbly. Little, and our lives are a little bit wobbly and our, our artwork expresses that point in our life. I'm at a point now in my life where I feel 
not to say that I, I know what I'm doing in the studio because... But there's a maturity to it. There's a maturity to it. I feel extremely confident. I, I come into my work with um, an understanding that I've never had before. It sounds like you've resolved a lot of issues so as well. I've resolved a lot of personal and artistic issues and I feel very confident what I'm doing and I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. I love Which is what it's all about. Oh, I, it is. When it's work, yeah. No, I mean, it's, I live to be in the studio. I'm at a stage in my life where I know a lot of people love to travel and the travel is a great experience. I have fortunately had a lot of opportunity to travel when I was younger. Um, but right now, I mean, if you said, here's two tickets to go somewhere, I'd be like, well, I'd really rather spend time in my studio. For now, not to say I might not want to go next year. So this solo show is very important to me because it's an opportunity to put out um, a body work for which I feel very proud of. That's and sort of the culmination of yeah. what we all want. Yeah. And I've been in some... Where is it going to be and when okay. is it going to be? Well, um, I put out a lot of submissions to um, either galleries or in galleries and universities. And so that's what I've been doing in the last couple of years is showing in schools. And I just threw a submission to the Harbor Gallery at UMass Boston. And this, it's a student-run gallery. And I get this very nice letter this summer from this um, young woman offering me a, a show starting September. And that was very, very nice. So, But you decided to really capitalize on I, this. I, I am because, well, for one, it's in the vicinity of a large city that I love, which is Boston. Um, where I am very much seeking representation from a gallery. So this is an opportunity to show um, a full body of work, what I'm capable of, um, and, and not be, uh, not to, not sh there's no, the theme doesn't encompass anybody else's work. I've been in several shows lately, the two people show or three person show that have been lovely shows and wonderful. I love showing with other people. It brings a dynamic. A different di of course. But, um, but what's exciting about this though is you and I've had multiple conversations about how mm -hmm. are you going to go about promoting this. Yes. Because I'm a big about letting people know that you've got work out there. Yes. And you've done a stunning job with it. I mean you've gotten quotes from very important people. You've managed to really um, work the show and I think it's going to be a very big success. Well that's because of you. No, it has nothing <laughs> to do with me. It's all about getting you to motivated yeah. to do that. Well and you've been very kind and you've been very encouraging and, and making me realize um, to not be afraid to do that. This is your chance. Right, You right. have very few opportunities to really get your work out there, be seen, and I say this to all the artists that I work with, if you don't take advantage of that, mm -hmm. it's sad because here's a place where everything is going to be on show, on exhibition, it's going to look beautiful, mm -hmm. and you need to get people there. Mm -hmm. And part of why I wanted to do this interview is to make people more aware of the show and mm -hmm. more aware of you and your work. And I think that um, if you get some sales from this, it's going to be wonderful. And I don't see why you shouldn't. I mean, I think the work is really, really on point. Well, I really appreciate that. Like, again, what I say is it comes from a place in my life where I feel like I know what I'm doing. I don't feel, I mean, not to say that you don't go in the studio and ask questions and not to say I know what the next move is. It's part of the process and what is just so wonderful about it is what I don't know as much as what I do know because I'll go in I tackle a piece of the painting at a time so I don't try to tackle the whole my, these paintings are extremely complex. complex oh my god there's yes. no way I could tackle all the issues so what happens is say, okay I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this element and then that's gonna inform the next major element and I try to break it down to what's the m next biggest element here and that informs the next part of this puzzle. You know, I, um, I love playing chess. Now, it's not a game I've had a lot of opportunity to play lately, but um, I love the game, and I have spent a period in my life where I played a lot of it's it. It's actually a great comparison. Yeah. Well, here's something kind of funny. So I, my first husband is also a painter. And I, um, I did a year and a half abroad in Italy when I was, I did my junior year there and then I went back for my senior year because I convinced my father that my education was so much better in Italy than it was in the States. Because not only was I, I was getting, you know, 
uh, uh, wonderful faculty. But it was just, you know, every day you go out and you learn a word, or you learn something. So you were constantly being stimulated. You know, all the synapses were going like this all the time. That's like your paintings, by the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, um, uh, anyways, what, oh yeah, okay. So anyway, I brought home a, a, a husband, right? <laughs> like, like every young American girl should do. And well, we got married here. But anyhow, we played a lot of chess. We played a lot of chess. And then we... We split up when I was 27, and I went my way, and he went his. And he's a wonderful person. He still lives in Philadelphia. But I, I um, saw him recently, and he was looking at my recent work, and he said, in, in time, well, "Do you like to play chess?" And I was like, "You don't remember? We play chess all the time." But you know, it's so but, interesting that reference because every move you yes. make, you have to calculate the next three moves exactly. before you make it. For every move, there's a counter move, and for every move, your your defense and your attack at the same time. So when you're doing a painting, everything you do is is moving or being affected or affecting. It's either being affected by what you've already done or it's and it's affecting the next thing So are you come. the queen, the king, or a pawn? I get to be every piece. I get to be the whole board. <laughs> That's true. I get to move the pieces at my will. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Would you help me answer this, finish this sentence mm -hmm. for me? Art is... I knew you were going to ask that. That's I, why I, I always well, ask. You always <laughs> ask, and I and and I my my instinct is love, and I think what a corny answer, but um, it just comes from the soul, and the soul is love, and so it's the only answer I can say is it's it's love. Well, I want to wish the you the essence. best of luck in this show. I know that the audience will be there. Hopefully, you'll get a lot of support, and it will be. A very important event in your life. Thank you so much for coming Thank today. You, Thank um, you for your support. My pleasure.